Tony. One sec. Hi, everyone. Welcome to It Doesn't Happen Overnight. I'm your host, Tony Adiyami, and I'm here today with Greta Meyer. Hi, Greta. Hi there. How are you? I'm doing lovely. We just made some tea. It's quite early, but um, when you're on the grind, you make stuff work whenever it needs to work. Uh, Greta's staying at my house this weekend and is doing really cool things that I think would be really awesome for a lot of people to hear. Um, so I really wanted to get her on the show, and because she's living with me technically right now, it was pretty easy. So super, super psyched. Um, but to start off, Greta, just... Why don't you give us a little bit about your background and yourself? Yeah, for sure. So, Tony and I both just graduated from Stanford. Fun fact, we are twins in our sorority. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. I not only are we sisters, we are twins. <laughs> we are, yes, not just sisters. Twins. Okay, anyway. Um, so, that's, that's a great fun fact. I'm glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> um, but, so I was product design, which is within the mechanical engineering department. Um, but it focuses a lot on, like, human-centered design as well. Um, so I really liked studying that because it was very intersectional. You didn't have to choose. I always felt kind of that a lot of the majors you really had to choose, like, am I an engineer or am I like an artist mm -hmm. or some sort of liberal arts education? Um, so I really liked that that kind of meshed together. So for people who didn't go to Stanford, can you give a 20 second, 10 second product design, like synopsis? So I don't yeah. think a lot of schools have a major like it. Yeah, so it, it's it is like you do kind of half, and it is kind of changing right now mm -hmm. as well. But for for when I was there, it was it's kind of like half engineering. So you do kind of the basics of mechanical engineering, so you know how to build things. Mm -hmm. And then the other half of it is like knowing why to build things, and so you do a lot of human centered design and value design, and that's like what the D school really focuses on. So it's like design thinking mm -hmm. and all around empathy figuring out essentially they look at how things are built in Silicon Valley yeah. and look at how sometimes people build just to build and it's not actually the right solutions and so there's often a lot more thoughtful things you can do to make sure that it's like not just maybe uh, maybe if I'm designing for you it's like not just what you're telling me but something else that I've observed about you yeah so it's a lot about why we're building as well so it's like going to the source which is like the yeah. consumers who are going to be potentially purchasing this and figuring yeah. out like what is a need here not just like I want to build a flamethrower and exactly. people will buy it because you're Elon Musk but in like a different world people wouldn't because why do we need flamethrowers but it's like okay going exactly. to people so with this background what is it that you're doing now Great question. So, <laughs> I am. I just started my own company um, with my co-founder Amanda, who was also. I want you to say that one more time. I just started my own company. Just started my own company. Okay, how old are you again? Twenty-two. Okay, same twins. So <laughs> once it's again. possible. Okay, keep going. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we essentially started this company in a class project, um, and it was very much a kind of product design approach but we were in it's called technology entrepreneurship was the class engineering 145 here at Stanford you should take it um and essentially it was like a hypothetical startup so we started out saying I personally have had negative experiences on my period I like the whole menstrual experience is really negative so we set out and we're like we should interview a ton of people see what the biggest pain points are here mm -hmm. see why people aren't really innovating in the space um, so we interviewed over 200 people, found that there's this huge anxiety when you're on your period um, and like very distracting people are reporting that you, we have athletes report that they had to come out of games because their tampons were leaking. Oh, wow. People that are business women that are saying, I had to reorganize my meeting so that I could check my tampon every like 45 minutes. Or I'm sitting in a boardroom with 10 men and all I can think about is like, am I going to leak in my jumpsuit? So it's whatever. like this thing that we are forced to deal with. Yeah. Not only like, oh, like once a year I have to do my taxes. Every month. That's hard to do. And it's holding us back. In a society where it's like, okay, I think we already have stuff against us, let alone yeah. our own bodies. Oh, there's a, there's a lot. There's stuff a lot there. Us. So we're like, you know, <laughs> we are, th then that's kind of the cool combination of like, I can find out what the need is, but also with PD, I can engineer something. So we found out there's this issue, mm -hmm. found out that it was 
specifically with tampons were leaking before they were full. Got and then from that side, we looked at that from an engineering perspective and said, why are they leaking? Found that there's something to do with the construction, that there are these linear channels. Mm -hmm. And then... Linear we, channels of the tampon? Of the tampon. So this is, this is the tampon. And this is the tampon. <laughs> <laughs> there's okay. like, uh, literally, there's lines, like grooves, that yeah. are actually meant to expand the surface area, which they do. But they actually are functionally funneling the fluid. Say that five times fast. Okay, but so someone who's using a tampon, tampon, I yeah. have seen these groups. Yes. Now, did I ever think about what they were for? No, because no. I don't have that mind. <laughs> but it's nice to know that someone has, it's someone and it's the it. problem. Yeah, because the problem. If you are a person that does not know what a tampon looks like, these are there, and these are real. It's like this. And it's like this. <laughs> but really. <laughs> Really small. I don't want any guys to get any ideas <laughs> about what we can do. No. Um, but we can do a lot. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so all of this led to the creation of your company. Yeah. So we essentially, at the end of the class, we pitched to a panel of venture capital judges, um, which was all hypothetical at that point. So we were like standing and presenting this slide, and we're it was completely hypothetical. Mm -hmm. um, and they were so excited about this. I mean, it's a huge market, reoccurring need that people have to solve. Um, but they were excited about our technology and they encouraged us to go get a file of provisional patent wow. and see what we could actually do with it. So that was kind of, that was December 2018. Um, and then we kind of kept going. So that was my senior year fall. Um, wow. And we kept going with this project to through two different classes three different classes since then um that's such the a cool spring. thing about the stanford program is because when there when there's an idea that's worth it you are incurred i mean oh Jewel yeah came out of stanford which is not one of our it's like product design program, program. yeah it's probably in the product <laughs> design program so many like other that. things <laughs> That, so have disrupted, that have yeah. disrupted the market, and yeah. maybe in that case it's in a negative way because it reamped our nicotine addiction as people, but this the could disrupt the yeah. positive way exactly. and that it's like, okay, we need to disrupt this because it's not working right now, and it's yeah. a widespread enough issue where it needs to work. So that's how Tampro, which is the name of your company, came yeah. to be. So it was originally Tampro, and now we just renamed to Tempo. 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 Ooh. Yeah. Gotta love it. I'll send you a brand. shirt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I just thought you got one of those. Yes. I was like, fuck. How do I get one of those shirts? Well, I'll send you one. It's about to be a new... I, 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 can, I mean, it's just nice to hear something that your friends are doing and be like, that's cool, and that needs to be done, and you're the ones tackling it. That's right. Well, we, we have a lot of help. I feel like that's one thing that we've realized is we are really lucky to be at Stanford with all of these opportunities, but also all these people that were encouraging us to do this. Yeah. We had a lot of, um, I feel like one real catalyst for us actually doing this full time was like having non-dilutive funding. So basically just like grant funding where they give you money to try something. Um, and we're just lucky to find kind of advisors that were doing things. I don't want to say they're similar, but they're like slightly medically yeah. focused startups and they were the ones that told us about all these opportunities. So what is like an average day or even week or month look like both in as like a CEO of Tempo but also just as an entrepreneur startup yeah. owner like what does it look like? Great question. Um, so Amanda and I actually so Amanda's my co-founder and we it's just the two of us working on this full time. I mean, we have kind of consultants and legal counsel, et cetera, but they're all not, they don't work with us mm -hmm. every day. It's like need on a need basis. Um, so Amanda and I also live together. So that's fun. We mm -hmm. spend a lot of time together, but we also, we work from home. So it's a short commute from my bedroom to the kitchen, um, which I love. Um, but then... So we'll work there. We often have like really early calls. We have 7 a.m. calls a lot because our research and development facility is in the United Kingdom. Mm. Um, and a lot of like tampon manufacturing people are overseas. Is there a reason? Um, just the ones that, it, the one, the companies that manufacture in the U.S. are, they're like owned by Procter & Gamble. Got it, Gamble got Park, it. And so they don't want to talk to us. But the ones that we want to work with um, okay, okay. Got it. So essentially, 
we have early calls a lot, which is great. Mm-hmm. It gets kind of up and going. Just gotta go. Um, and then it's either, it's kind of a mix of things. We could have meetings in person with people. A lot of the times, it, there's a lot of calls out of our own kitchen. Um, and then it's a lot of, I think we were talking about this before, but it's a lot of being self-driven mm-hmm. and knowing there's a lot of times where we're waiting to hear back from people. So it's like, if I'm working with our um, legal counsel that's working on our intellectual properties or patents, it's like, I will send them a draft or I'll send them feedback on something or like a whole thing of drawings. And then you have to wait. Right. For and so that, yeah. like, for me to prepare something like that um, will take a while, but then then you have to wait and you're like, okay. Because you don't I, have like a dedicated team working around the clock on this stuff. Right. Other than you and Amanda. Yeah. So And so you're kind of then the project managers mm-hmm. of just making sure that you're kind of juggling all things and making sure that like you're engaging the right people. So it's like, is our IP council the right partner mm-hmm. for us? Is our FDA, we have to go through FDA, which is a whole challenge that we've never come across. Um, Makes sense. And, hopefully, yeah, like, hopefully not. I've never gotten anything <laughs> FDA cleared, but hopefully we will. Um, and so it's really about, I think a lot of the things that I focus on are just making sure I'm making these decisions that I'm not tech, not experiencing myself, yeah. but making sure that I'm gathering as many either recommendations or just like guidance from advisors and mentors as possible so that I can make educated decisions. It's like at some point you have to make a choice and it's like you can hear 10 positive opinions, 10 negative opinions. Like you can, you can really go, but I feel like being an entrepreneur is just being like, this has to get done and I am leading the ship. So like I'm making this choice. I'm going with my gut. And I feel like people don't trust their guts that often, but we're, we've been right so many times. Like just the yeah. fact that we're all here right now, like we, we've been right a lot of times. So alive. We've also been wrong a lot of times, but you learn from that. And like not saying you're not going to be wrong in choices you make, but it's like you learn and hopefully none of those choices. And usually they're not our, company destroying choices are like it's like, possible it's possible <laughs> yeah but hopefully unlikely probable yeah. I wanted it to rhyme I'm not sure if that makes sense <laughs> um no that's exactly what we talked okay. about it's just and it sound it's so annoying and like Silicon Valley to be like biased toward action but it really is something that you have to remember is like if you're sitting here and thinking about the decision like non-action is actually action itself yeah you have to I mean so many decisions that you you can make, you can go back on. Mm -hmm. Um, And the important part is just like, you did something in the beginning. But it's funny because I think Amanda and I have, I mean, it's just the two of us making decisions. Yeah. So it's like, she's much more gut centered and I'm much more like, let's make a list and very methodical about it. Yeah. And so it's really, it's finding that balance um, and making sure that we're making a decision, making a decision quickly, but also not being like rash because you often have more time than you even if you're stressed about something, you have, like, at least a day to call, like, five people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just get a little bit more information. And, like, also setting deadlines for yourself so that things are getting done. Like, even you coming this this weekend, I was like, am I ready to start this podcast? Not right now. Can I be ready by the time <laughs> Greta wants to film? Yes. I mean, like, just fig- you just figure it out. You think about it. You execute. And yeah. you just... At some point you go and then you get feedback and it's like a positive feedback loop. Yay, that worked. That was good. The lawyers got back to me with this. Now I'll do that. Or they're like, this is trash. Okay. Negative feedback loop. And you're like, let me try something different. And you just iterate and keep going and going until it keeps progressing. Yeah. That's exactly my day to day. It describes it perfectly. Exactly. So what is it like wearing all these different hats? Because it sounds like you are now an engineer. (laughs) product manager, CEO, you are pitching this to people all the time, which is why you're here right now in LA. So what is it like? And not having maybe done all those things before, since you're 22. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's really what I love about it is that no, no two days are the same. And that sometimes it'll be like, we could do a deep dive where it's, I'm becoming a super expert on this specific guidance document mm-hmm. in the FDA or like, oh, and now I, to actually today I have to work on our financial models. And like, that's also something I'd never done before. And so I really enjoy that, like the adrenaline of learning something new. And yeah. so I really like how it's so many different hats. Um, 
as well as the kind of fast pace and how it's always changing. That's kind of why I like product design because it is that kind of interdisciplinary, like you experience the whole range of the problem solving aspects. And that's something that's fun is to be like, oh, today I'm gonna talk to the lawyers or we have to do this thing. And mm -hmm. what do you guys, what do we think also strategically about investment? And those are, I mean, everything that I do every day, I've like never done before. <laughs> Which that's is so awesome. nice to hear though, because I feel like we're conditioned to be like, if you haven't, if you didn't major in it, you can't go into it. If you oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't score high enough on your testing, like standardized testing, yeah. you shouldn't. Like, remember they, we'd take tests and they would be like, you should be this. Yeah. Like, I get they're like, we you're wanna math, just quantify do that. everything, but yeah. I'm like, no, I think we can, we can, we are, the reason we are humans and we have these brains and opposable yeah. thumbs is because like we can learn <laughs> Specifically and then these. do. <laughs> so it's like, just learn. Like we have, especially now when we have so many resources at our disposal where you can Google pretty much everything or there's like a YouTube video for pretty much anything getting on a tangent, but still, I, I really appreciate hearing that. Like, I don't know most of the things I'm doing, but I'm learning. Yeah. And that's, that's the whole fun part though. It's like, if I were an expert at what I was doing when I was 22, there would probably be a, an issue Yeah, or like some sort of complacency that was occurring. And I just love, I love the kind of, I mean, it's quite chaotic at times, like feeling like you don't really know anything, but then gaining your bearings in all of these different kind of sectors is really fun this may be your answer but what would you say is has been like the highlight of of this experience so far yeah i mean i think it, it really is the feeling like what keeps me going this is a different question is the feeling of learning every mm -hmm. day um and just feeling like the the really cool feeling of, of being a novice in something yeah. but also then having a deadline and like a pretty much non-starter like if you don't get good at this thing like this business will not go so that's a really good incentive <laughs> to learn something quickly um also i think the highlights are looking back on like looking at some of i mean it's amazing just thinking about like first of all the memories that we've had like it's so fun yeah. to do this stuff and where this started but yeah exactly and looking at but it's it's really cool i think a highlight is when we look back and we think of who did I meet with like last February or last March and how, what didn't I know then? Like what questions were I asking? And then thinking about all the people I went, learned since. Yeah. So it's definitely like same thing, but from a different lens. I love that. Yeah. And then like, what would you say on the opposite side of that has been like the hardest part? So if someone's going through this, it's like, this happens too. Yeah. I think it's just constantly reframing the feedback that you're getting in a positive way. And like, I love getting feedback and really appreciate when people take the time to give me feedback, mm -hmm. even if it's like, Hey, we don't want to invest in you. It's, you have to train yourself to say why. Yeah. And that is hard to not kind of walk away and say like, Oh, we're better without that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's really challenging. And then also just, there's, there's, a lot of days where you're waiting for something and the momentum momentum changes like crazy like some days we have 10 victories and some days it's like oh that was kind of a slow day that felt weird mm -hmm. and just keeping yourself energized during those days i think is really challenging um i feel that yeah i feel that a lot um i what you said made me think of this person and I'm going to re-record this intro when I get their name and the company that she founded but it was essentially her um, trying to get makeup for people that look like humans and it was just like all the makeup people had models and people had beautiful skin and whatever and she's like I don't look like that like I want to make makeup for that and as she was going from VC to VC and kept getting a no she finally because she was really excited about this person she asked why and he was like, do you want me to give you the honest answer? And she was like, yes, please. And he was like, I don't think women would buy makeup from someone that looks like you. And while she says that story now, the entire audience gasped. And we were like, that's awful. And she goes, you know what? I needed to hear that because I knew he was wrong. And I knew that one day I was going to prove him wrong because I look like everyone. And we need products for us. And it was just such an inspiring story that's like those no's were as informative as the yeses. And it's like using it all to 
really frame your mindset on all this because like you said you haven't done this before so hearing from people that have invested before have been in this business before is helpful but you're not doing what they're doing and they may not see your vision so it's like i appreciate the feedback good and bad but let me take that all into stride and like keep going yeah exactly um where do you see yourself in five years wow um all right that could be a lot of different a lot of different yeah. places well i mean i think it's funny this is totally not answering your question but i never i think a lot of people go to stanford and because of the entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and they're like i want to start my own company like i'll never i was talking to people a couple weeks ago and they're like I just realized that I want to only work for myself. And I was like, you're 21. Like, you probably shouldn't already have that conclusion. You should have an idea based on that the one worth- internship <laughs> that you didn't like your boss in. Like, that seems a little rash. That's exactly what people sound like, though. Oh, yeah. 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 Like- <laughs> it's crazy. And I think there's a little bit of, like, first of all, humility that needs to be learned. Mm-hmm. Um, but also realizing that, like, working for yourself is not every day. It's not that cool. Mm-hmm. Like. I mean, it's, it's awesome, but it's also like you have, like I said, the pressures are a lot higher yeah. and it's easy to get. There's no stressed. manager to like fall back on. Oh no. Any, the, it's only anything. my fault. Like, <laughs> and Amanda's fault, but <laughs> it's, we can share the faults. So it's only two of us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so I think it's like realizing that it, my career could take me anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but making sure that I'm following kind of like the, it sounds very trite, but following your passions. Um, Like I was honestly super excited about the job that I had lined up after graduation. Yeah, I was gonna say, you had something lined up. So I would, um, this is just to say that I would never have expected to be here five years ago. Um, Nor is, was my goal to like start my own company, but it's more like following your passions and following Taking those risks that sometimes seem crazy. Yeah. I would have never told you any at any point during Stanford that I would be, like, the founder and of a company. And we started Stanford five years ago. Exactly. Like, yeah. So I would have never. People. Yeah. Yeah. Never known that. I love that answer because that is what this podcast is about, where it's, like, you don't really know where your passions take you. It's kind of easy if you start a job to know, I get promoted to consultant in a year senior consultant about two years after like they lay out your path for you they show you that so you can very clearly say in five years if i stay at this company i hope to be a senior manager right when you're following your passion one not only do passions change and divert and follow new paths but it's like that's sort of the beauty of it is that it's very true to the moment and it's very like i don't i can't tell you where i'm going to be in five years because you don't know what's going to spring up from any of this and it could be this or something completely different and that's kind of the beauty of it because it's not it's not monotonous ever it's very dynamic to like where you are in the moment yeah like who you are in the moment yeah that being said like you can have goals obviously so i'm like i hope i have a job i hope i'm learning every day like but i think that those are if you keep that in mind and you're just like searching for something that's going to keep you like there's so many times that no one's setting deadlines, but it's like my own passion makes me put in extra work. And I think that's the same thing for any founder is like, that's, that's why it's like a 24 seven job mm-hmm. is because it's, you've really found something that you want to spend all your time on. Do you have any advice for either future tampon creators <laughs> or hopefully you just monopolize the market there's no <laughs> way for anyone else to get in but just <laughs> for any I give like really bad advice <laughs> don't do it um or for just anyone who has an idea that they think is worth pursuing and I guess maybe with the disclaimer of the resources that you had within the Stanford department but also like just any advice for someone who wants to make their idea happen yeah um so amanda and i talk about this a lot because we have a lot of friends that are still in school that are like i'm about to start my own thing and that is so exciting to me to hear that other people are also jazzed about something Mm -hmm. um so yeah i think making the most of the resources like if you are a student there's a ton of things that you can get for free because there's a lot of very 
wealthy people that want to encourage um, young entrepreneurs. So yeah. that's great. Um, but other than that, it would just be around talking to people. And I think a lot of people think that it is, I mean, like this is called, it doesn't happen overnight. Like you don't make a startup overnight and it took us months of talking to people to even consider doing this full time. Mm -hmm. But I think I would say get out there and start talking to people, whether that, whether that is potential customers, VCs, mm -hmm. like I think people say, oh, it's too, it's too early to approach an investor with this idea, I don't have enough, but that that's going to save you so much time down the line. If yeah. you were to put that off for six months until you did X, Y, and Z, Yeah. rather than why not build that relationship starting then, and then you can come back to them in six months once you've done whatever they, maybe you do what they've done or maybe what they recommend, and maybe you do something completely different, but it's like not being afraid to just say, hey, I have this idea. What do you think about this? Yeah. Rather than it's not going to be you wake up one morning and decide this is my calling and I'm going to quit my job for this. It's much more like a building and like a crescendo of a lot of things. Coming it's different. like get out of, I feel like we're so used to staying in the echo chamber that is our own head and just bouncing back ideas. And even for this podcast and my larger project, like I've been in my head, like literally I can't sleep because I will think of an idea, I'm like, I have to write it down right now. And I'll just like go write it down. And I finally got on the phone with my brother yesterday. I'm like, hey, can we just go through all the things that I'm naming this so we can just bounce back and forth until we find something that we both like, just so that like, it's just not here. And I had starter ideas and like many things that I had the description and what I wanted it to be, but I didn't have the thing. And it's like, you don't have to have the thing. Mm -hmm. Just have an idea and have the passion and have the push and then talk to one person and talk two people, five people, and then just keep iterating until it's like, I now feel like I have a thing worth going for. Yeah. Quitting yeah. my job for. Any of that. Yeah. And in that sense, then you can make sure that there's an actual need versus just, I want to start my own business. You're because like, I don't want to work for anybody <laughs> ever again. I hate the idea of having a boss. <laughs> Good luck. I was like, I love my boss. I miss my boss. <laughs> That's such good advice. I'm like, people will have to need it in yeah. some capacity. Don't quit your job. Yeah, you like, find that people out. Yeah. need it. Greta, thank you so much for being um, the inaugural guest <laughs> on this podcast. Uh, honored. Supposed to do lightning round questions. I literally have none in my head. Um, what's your favorite TV show right now? Oh, so I just started watching Hunters. Oh, which is great um have been really enjoying that mm -hmm. i also love altered carbon great show what, what streaming platforms um <laughs> streaming platforms? good question uh hunters is on amazon prime mm -hmm. and altered carbon is on netflix it's like sci-fi what is your like when you're working really late and you just want a treat just to like keep yourself going what do you eat Mint chocolate chip ice cream. Amazing. It's the go-to. Last question. Um, how many times a day do you think, hmm, nope, I'm scratching that question. <laughs> I don't think I have another question. Uh, hey, yeah. hi. You know. <laughs> um, who's your best friend in the entire world? Oh, my God. <laughs> so it's you know, a lot of people will <laughs> get. I'm just trying to find out. Sorry, we're cutting that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Uh, tune in next week or whenever I release these episodes for another guest, another podcast. And remember, it doesn't happen overnight. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Greta. <laughs> you know, this isn't on. You're kidding me. You're kidding me.